Today we will discuss the topic of critical speed of shafts. Here we have a uh, shaft which is supported by the bearings. For simplicity purposes, I have uh, shown it vertical. So this is actually in practical purposes. This is kept horizontal with the shaft and this is the rotor. So for analysis purposes, we uh, keep it vertical so that the analysis is simpler. And this is O is the center of axis of rotation and S is the uh, shaft axis. So here we assume a small eccentricity in the rotor. So this eccentricity is always uh, practically possible. Avoiding eccentricity in any uh, rotary systems is uh, very difficult and almost impossible because even a small eccentricity would be uh, present in the practical systems. So we consider a small eccentricity E. So the CG of the rotor would be at this point instead of the um, axis of uh, rotation. So this is the CG because of this eccentricity. Now this is at the uh, stationary position that is the shaft is not uh, rotating. Now we will give a rotation to the shaft. So here when we give the rotation to the shaft what happens is there will be a centrifugal force which would act over here towards this side it would be uh, say it would it would be m omega square and this would be y plus e where y is the uh, displacement of the uh, shaft axis from the center because of this uh, eccentricity and due to the rotation. So what happens is there is a deflection of the uh, shaft. There is a deflection of the shaft because of the rotation and then there is a eccentricity which was already present. So if we have to represent this, this would be represented in this way. It is so this would be the shaft axis and this would be the CG of that. So this would represent the eccentricity and this distance would be the Y that is the deflection of the shaft due to the rotation. So if we draw the shaft it, it is would be like this. So this is when rotation is given. So this is the displacement, this is the deflection of the shaft y and this is due to the eccentricity. So here what we see here is the, this is the rotor can be uh, drawn, can be shown like this. So this is the rotor. So here, so the side there is a, a centrifugal force that is m omega square into y plus e. So here you see that the CG is shifted over here as compared to what was the distance from the uh, axis of the uh, rotation. So this is O and this is the CG but here it is the uh, O and the CG that is axis of rotation and the CG the distance is more over here. So it is Y plus E because of the rotation given. So this has some rotation given and this is this case was stationary. This is stationary and this is rotation given. So there will be a restoring force because of this uh, centrifugal force and that is nothing but the stiffness of the uh, shaft multiplied by the uh, distance and this is equal to m into y plus e into omega square. Why am I taking y? Because if we consider this as the horizontal this would be 
this direction would be x and this would be y so that is why i take here it to be y so ky is equal to m into y plus e omega square or ky minus ky minus my omega square is equal to m e omega square so this uh, take y as common y into k minus m omega square is equal to m e omega square y is equal to m e omega square divided by k minus m omega square or uh, divide the whole thing by m you get e omega square divided by omega n square minus omega square or y can be written as divide the whole thing by omega um, n square you get e into omega by omega n whole square divided by 1 minus omega by omega n whole square so what you see here is this omega is the um, force frequency that is rotation of the shaft and this is the natural frequency of the system so this is the eccentricity when omega is equal to omega n so this would be 1 minus 1 and y goes to infinity so this is called as the critical speed of the shaft so critical speed of the shaft means the speed at which the there is resonance that is omega is equal to omega n this is also called as whirling of shaft this is also called as whirling of shaft so when omega is equal to omega n so y goes to infinity and this is called as the speed at which the shaft rotates that that speed is called as the critical speed of shaft so when we plot this when we plot y versus omega by omega n what we get is at so the equation is this y is equal to e into omega by omega n whole square divided by 1 minus omega by omega n whole square so if omega by omega n whole square is uh, 0 if omega by omega n is 0 then y is 0 so if uh, omega by omega n is 1 then y goes to infinity so we show the y going to infinity so this is equal to 1 over here omega by omega n is 1 and if you see here if omega is greater than 1 that is this term goes to uh, negative 1 minus this omega is greater than omega n so what happens is it goes to negative and this would be going this way and this would tend to this is eccentricity e if omega by omega n is very large then y will tend to minus e so if that is the case when omega by omega n is very large so this is how the uh, graph will look like so this is the uh, critical speed of uh, shaft where there is resonance so when we plot this so this is the case when omega is less than omega n so this is the case when omega is less than omega n so when omega is greater than 
so when omega is greater than omega n what we have is so this would be so this the y would shift to the opposite side so this would be y and this would be the eccentricity and this is the uh, shaft axis uh, sorry rotor axis that is the shaft axis only and then we draw the rotor shaft axis and the rotor axis is the same so this would be this way and this is the CG so this point is the CG so what difference you see this will connect the shaft so what you see here is this from this position this has flipped over this side because y is negative when the omega by omega n, when omega is greater than omega n so what you see here is in the first case the cg was outside that is heavier side was away from the axis from the uh, axis of the rotation so this is the cg so here the heavier side is outside but so here in this case the CG is over here so the heavier side is inside so heavier side being inside is better than heavier side being outer this would cause lot of vibration and this would reduce the and this would reduce the vibration so heavier side being inside is always better and when omega is much much greater than omega n what we get is so this would be the shaft axis and this is a rotor this would be the rotor and this is y which will be approximately equal to e this is e and this would be the cg the axis of rotation and the cg would almost coincide so this can be represented by this way So you can see that the vibration has uh, would reduce when it would be this situation when omega is much uh, greater than omega n than this one because the y has reduced here. So the deflection has uh, reduced. So what we are talking about is the transverse uh, displacement, transverse uh, displacement and not the torsional. Don't get confused with the torsional vibration and this one torsional is uh, this uh, rotation torsional we are not talking about torsion here we are talking about the bending so this is the transverse vibration we are talking about so this is totally different from torsional vibration and it has nothing to do with torsional vibration this is what we are talking about is the transverse uh, displacement that is the bending of the shaft so you have this uh, displacement uh, reduced when you have omega much greater than omega n so what we require is the so the best thing to operate would be over in this 
region or much before the critical speed so we need to avoid critical speed otherwise the amplitude of vibration will go to infinity suppose you want to operate at say this point so you cannot start some uh, machinery at this speed you have to start from zero and come over here when coming over here you would be passing through the resonance that is omega is equal to omega n so when you are close to this resonance what you have to do is quickly pass over quickly pass over to this speed so that you don't stop the so, so, so that you don't stop varying the speed at the resonance so if the machine if the rotary machine is held idle at this is kept rotating at this uh, critical speed it will lead to a lot of damage so when you have to operate the uh, system at this speed say uh, this is the speed which is where omega is much uh, greater than omega n you have to quickly pass through this resonance area and then you have to reach the speed and then uh, the shaft can uh, work better so this is about the critical speed of shaft which we need to take care to avoid the uh, resonance. Thank you.